Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the process of how I made my very first handmade Lolita JSK, as well as my first attempt at trying to recreate an existing dress by the Lolita fashion brand Angelic Pretty. The dress I'll be attempting to recreate is called the Lovely Tartan JSK by AP, which was released in 2018 and was actually a part of a Lucky Pack 3-piece set which included the dress itself, available in two colorways, red or green a matching bow hairband, as well as a long sleeve white blouse with a large bow at the neck, and I'm not sure if it was detachable or not, but it still looks pretty cute. The dress features a non-detachable red ribbon bow, as well as three red heart buttons on the center front bodice. It has ruffle shoulder straps, a tiered ruffle skirt, full back shearing, waist ties, and heart lace along the bottom. I first came across this dress as a listing on Lace Market last summer when I was just starting to get back into wearing the fashion again and I thought it was super cute, but at the time the person who had it listed was selling it for about $200 and I honestly thought it was a little high for a Lucky Pack dress, so ultimately I decided to pass on purchasing it and instead started looking into how I could make one of my own. And several Etsy purchases later, I found myself with all the materials needed in order to make my very own version of this dress for well under $200. In fact, I was actually able to make this dress and matching hair bow for under $100, which I think shows that where there is a will, there is a way, and also that it is 100% possible to try and recreate some of these more simplistic, non-printed brand dresses of your own if you really want to, without feeling like you have to spend a ton of money to do so. And yeah, I guess with that, let's dive into how I made the dress. So because I really liked the red colorway of this dress the most, I decided to go with this really nice red tartan fabric that I felt came closest to the look of the red tartan fabric used for the AP dress. I should note that I'm not going for 100% accuracy when it comes to recreating this dress, more like ballpark is kind of the goal. I'm also planning on lining this dress, which in hindsight is something I should have thought through a little bit more before I actually went through and made it, but you know, live and learn, you know, more on that later, you'll understand what I'm talking about as we get into how I made this. Anyways, for the bodice, I got these red heart buttons to go down the center front, as well as this nice red satin ribbon to create the bodice bow that sits on the front. And lastly, for the lace, I managed to find this ridiculously cute cotton white heart lace, which I think is such a good find. And I feel like it has the same kind of vibe as the heart lace that is used on the dress, so I think I really lucked out on that one. So yay, Etsy purchase! I decided to use one of the patterns from my Otomi no sewing books to use as a guide and felt like this particular JSK pattern came the closest to what was likely used to construct the lovely tartan JSK. Because the majority of the pattern pieces used for this dress were just different sizes of rectangles, the only portion of the dress that I actually made a pattern for was the bodice, which consisted of just three main pieces, the center front, side front, and the back shearing panel. I did end up making a partial mock-up for this project, specifically for the bodice, just to see what the fit was like with the back shearing panel, and also to look for any other fitting adjustments I might need to make before I attach the skirt pieces. And surprisingly, there weren't really any adjustments I needed to make other than the small adjustment you see me kind of pinching at right here. So after I made that small adjustment, I went ahead and moved on to the actual construction of this dress. So the very first thing that I did was pin down all of my bodice pattern pieces with their new adjustments that I took from my mock-up. And because the remaining pattern pieces were again just different sizes of rectangles, I just marked out the dimensions of the remaining pattern pieces, such as the waistband, ruffles, and skirt pieces, directly onto the fabric using pins and cut them out that way. It also really helped that this fabric had both a horizontal and vertical pattern going across it, so I also used those lines as a guide to help ensure that all of my rectangles rectangle pieces were cut out properly. Also completely forgot that I wanted to add pockets to this dress, so all you see me doing here is using a dress that I already own and just tracing out the pocket pattern of it to use in my dress because all dresses should have pockets. Once I had everything cut out, the first thing I decided to work on was the construction of the center front bodice since it had the most pieces that needed to be attached to it before I felt like I could fully move forward with assembling the rest of the bodice. I started off first by sewing together the ruffle that goes along the top edge of the bodice front. 
I then gathered it down and fit it along the top edge of the front of the bodice and sewed it in place. Next I moved on to assembling the kind of faux button panel that goes directly down the center of the bodice, starting first by hemming the outer edges of the ruffles and then sewing gathering stitches on the opposite side. Here you just see me showing you what the little faux button panel looks like, as well as how I attach the ruffles to it. Basically I just sewed the ruffles onto this little ironed over flap that you see here. So that way, once I go to attach it to the front of the bodice, all I have to do is push this little flap underneath the panel that I made, and all of the raw edges will be hidden within the little panel, so it won't be able to be seen from the outside. I then sewed down my newly assembled faux button panel onto my bodice, cleaned it up a bit by removing any visible gathering stitches, and then ta-da! We have a faux button panel ready for buttons. But before I attach the buttons, I first wanted to sew down the little ribbon strip that goes underneath the ruffled edge, so I just sewed that down along the top. All right, and we are on to buttons. Now, remember how at the beginning of this video I mentioned in my oh-so-detailed project overview how there were only three heart buttons on the center front bodice? Tell me why I'm sewing on four. Like, did I not read my own notes? Trick question. The answer is no. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not read my own notes, clearly. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm sewing on four. I don't know. I did end up catching this mistake shortly after I filmed this section and then correctly sewed on the three buttons that were originally supposed to go on the front, but in the meantime, please enjoy this footage of me pointlessly sewing on extra buttons that I ultimately ended up removing because I don't like to read my own notes. With the center front of the bodice now completed, I moved on to pinning on the side front pieces and sewing them in place. After the side front pieces were sewn to the center front of the bodice, I started working on attaching the shoulder straps of the dress. Unlike typical shoulder straps which start at the top of the bodice, these straps actually start at the waistband and are sewn down along the side front of the bodice before making their way over the shoulder and then onto the back of the dress into the shearing panel. To start off, I first attached the ruffle and assembled it similarly to how I did the faux button panel, which is basically hemming it on one side, running a gathering stitch on the opposite side, gathering it down, pinning it to the shoulder strap on one side, and then sewing it down. I then pinned the shoulder strap onto the bodice following the side front seam, making sure before I sewed it down to open up the waistband and tuck in the ends of the shoulder strap. As I mentioned before, these shoulder straps do start in the waist, so I just made sure to tuck that in there, pin everything in place, and then sew the shoulder strap to the side front of the bodice. In hindsight, I really should have used a stabilizer or an interfacing for this portion as the fabric did want to move around while I was sewing it along the bust curve area, which if I were using a non-printed fabric wouldn't really be that big of a deal, but with a printed fabric, especially one that has lines going across it in any direction, um, using a stabilizer will make your life 10 times easier. So note to future Sicily, please use a stabilizer. Oh my god, we're finally almost done with the bodice. Can you believe it? Seriously, this thing took forever, but the only thing I have left to do at this point is sew on the lining. I did do a bit of stay stitching along the top edge of the bodice lining just to keep it from showing through along the top portion of the bodice. And I actually think it turned out really nice, and I'm really glad that I chose to do that over a top stitching for this dress. With the front of the bodice now officially done, it was time to move on to assembling the back shearing panel. With the right sides facing, I measured 6 inches out from the center of the back panel on both sides and pinned down the shoulder straps before sewing along the top edge. 
I then flipped the panel right side out and starting a half an inch from the top, marked out my elastic channels as shown and proceeded to sewing the channels. You have no idea how satisfying this was. After the elastic had been fully inserted, I secured everything by sewing along the side edges and moved on to attaching the back panel to the front bodice. Here I'm just showing you how I attached everything, which looking at this now, I probably would have just sewn down both the lining and the main fabric at the same time versus doing what I'm showing you here, where I only sewed the shirring panel down on the main fabric first and then went on to hand sew the lining to the back shirring panel. At the time, this made sense, but looking back on it now, I definitely would not have chosen to do it this way. So yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but hey, I guess whatever works, right? Moving on to the skirt, I sewed the front and back panel together on the side, making sure not to forget my lovely pocket, and then moved on to attaching the bottom ruffle tier of the skirt. To make things easier on myself, I used the salvage edge of the fabric for the gathering edge for the ruffle so that I didn't have to worry about it fraying while I was gathering it. I ironed down the top 3 fourths of an inch and sewed a gathering stitch along the bottom edge of the fold. Once gathered, I pinned the ruffle tier onto the bottom of the top tier and sewed them together. I also took some time to iron and sew down the hem for the bottom ruffle tier as well. Next I moved on to sewing together the lining. Again, sewing gathering stitches along the top edge of the fabric, sewing the ridiculously cute heart lace along the bottom, gathering it down, and then finally sewing the lining skirt onto the lining bodice. I'm not sure why I didn't film me sewing on the main skirt, but I attached it in the same way you see me doing here with the lining, so I promise you're not missing out on anything. All right, and it was about this time where I really wish I had thought through the lining process of this dress a little bit more. The pattern that I used did not actually call for any sort of lining other than a small facing on the front of the bodice, which made trying to figure out how to hide the raw edges from both the skirt and the back shearing panel very confusing because I didn't know what to do with it. If I was going to do this again, before I assembled the back shearing panel, I actually would have sewn the lining for the skirt as well as the main fabric of the skirt into the bottom channel of the shearing panel so that way the raw edges for not only the shirring panel but also for the lining and the skirt are hidden inside the bottom elastic channel and I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do with them. Since I was basically already done at this point that you're looking at right now, I didn't really bother to go back to try and fix it and instead when I was sewing together the shirring panel, the skirt lining, and the main skirt, I just used a zigzag stitch along the edges so that way it would at least minimize the amount of fraying that would happen. I did also use a little bit of fray check as well just to keep everything from completely coming apart like crazy and I feel like that kind of worked out okay obviously it's not the best solution but it is a solution and you know live and learn right Uh, 
I look so cute. Oh my freaking gosh, like I cannot get over how cute I look in this dress. I made this. I made this dress with my hands. Seriously, I cannot get over how good it looks. Honestly, I'm very proud with how it turned out. I think it looks so freaking cute. Also, shout out to me for spending the extra time at like three in the morning to make that hair bow to make a matching set because oh my gosh, it looks so freaking cute. All right, so as you probably already noticed, I didn't end up adding on the little ribbon bow that goes on the front of the dress since I just felt that the ribbon that I had was a little too thin for a proper bow. Plus, there was already a high chance that even if I had made it, I would have just removed it anyway so that I could wear a bow on my blouse. So yeah, didn't end up making that. <laughs> I also ended up omitting the waist ties as well since I don't normally wear waist ties anyways, so no waist ties either. But other than that, I pretty much stuck to the original look of the dress and think that I did a pretty pretty good job at getting within that kind of ballpark slash close enough range that I was talking about. Also, my version didn't end up costing me $200 plus shipping and it has pockets, so already I think my dress is infinitely better, but that's also just me. My hope is that this video can encourage those of you who might be on the fence or maybe hesitant about making some of your own Lolita clothes to just kind of take that first step and give it a try because there really is something special about making and wearing your own Lolita pieces that you kind of have to experience for yourself in order to understand. But anyways, thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!